During your recent GP user group training class for payroll, the question arose about how to handle the situation where you have deducted too much from an employee and you need to pay him back. Now, my suggestion is, where possible, completely void the check and reissue the check again. That's the best way to do it. But unfortunately, we do not always have that luxury. If the employee has already cashed a check, for example, we, we do not have the ability to do that. Or if it's been direct deposited, it's still not, that's not an easy task. So, how can we do it? We can do it through the use of negative deductions. So, let's take a look at that now. So, I have this employee, Kathy Flood and I could see that I have deducted $25 from employee purchases and I found out that that was a mistake. So I need to give her the $25 back and she does not want to wait until the next payroll to get her $25 back. So I'm going to take care of that now. And the first thing I want to do is point out that I have, and I'm using GP 2013 incidentally, the first thing I want to do is point out that I've set up a fake pay code. So let's take a look at that now. So I'm using the pay code called adjustment that I've set up and it is actually a piecework type of pay code. And I am and I use this one because very few this very few people use piecework and that way it will not alter the counts. If you do use piecework, you might want to set one up for hourly or something of the nature. And you really want to stick to hourly or piecework because we want to keep the unit of pay at zero. And I have my, because I'm using piecework, my unit of pay name is called correction. And I've just set it up as daily or miscellaneous. So, um, because I'm not going to be dealing with taxes. So I've set this up for Kathy Flood. And now what I need to do is key in a transaction for her. So I'll go to transaction entry and create a batch. And perhaps this was something that was um, done on the April 12th payroll. So let's pull up Kathy Flood. And I'll start with the pay code. I'm going to tell it I want to pay her that adjustment. And I have one adjustment to make, and it's at $0. And then this way it will not calculate any additional taxes for her. Now, if you it doesn't work for you doing... Uh, the hourly or pay code because you in some report you add those up you may want to choose what um, one of the other GP users suggested and that is they set up a pay code for other and they paid them the employee one additional penny so they gave him a correction of one penny so that's another option that you can do all right so I have um, I've set that up now I need to give Kathy back that $25 so what I'm going to do is key in a transaction for this deduction. And if you look, this deduction is set up as a transaction required anyhow. So this is how I can do it. So it needs to be set up as a transactionable deduction. And I'm going to put in a negative $25. So if I put in a positive $25, that would take out a deduction of $25. And by making that number negative, I'm kind of telling it to do the opposite. So I'm telling it to take out a negative $25 or put $25 back in. So I have my piecework option for adjustment set up at zero rate and I've told it to put $25 back in for the deduction. So let's go through and process this payroll. Now under build check files I set up a build check file option for one check and just so we can take a look at another GP 2013 feature. Let's change our pay periods. And I've set it up for just the one employee. Now when you're doing this, you'll want to make sure that you do not include salary. And you'll want to check your deductions. And in this case, I'm only utilizing the deduction for employee purchasing. I definitely do not want it to calculate 401 tax or 401k or insurance or anything like that. My benefits, I want to make sure they're set to none because I don't want to add any additional um, benefits to that. And I will select my batch. And now I'll build check files. And I'll go ahead and click on save. And I will print my build check file report. And because I'm using 2013 and in the posting setup, I told it I wanted the ability to access this new report, the build check file exception report. I'll have that pull up. So when I'm looking at my build check file, I can see that 
I do have my one piecework set up at zero dollars and I have my negative deduction of twenty five dollars and I also see the warning so that when this closes out I should get that same warning on my new report and the benefit of this report is if you have eight hundred or thirteen hundred employees that you're paying and you have an error message this report will prevent you from having to scroll through pages and pages and pages and pages just to find the error so we'll close that out and we'll go ahead and calculate checks because the only error I had was the date range and I don't see any point in correcting that and we'll print this to the screen and I'm going to cancel all the other reports all right. So I can see now I'm paying her one piecework item at zero dollars, so it's a total of zero, and I'm putting twenty-five dollars back in their account. Okay, so now I can just go through and print checks. And we'll calculate deposits if there are any, and there are none. In in this situation, because I'm using 2013 in my setup, I've told it to not to print alignments, to go ahead and print checks directly. So by doing so, it'll automatically default to printing her check. There we go. So here is her $25 check and there are no earning statements to print. So now I can process her pay run and I'll cancel the rest of those reports since we're doing this for fun. And here is the check register and you'll see that the net pay is $25, the gross pay is zero and that's because the deductions is a negative 25 and the tax liability ended up being zero because there was no tax taken on it. I'm just giving her her money back. I hope this helps you and Melissa, I particularly hope this helps you. Thanks.